Hi everyone. Welcome to our special Christmas broad- broadcast from the Co. This is a special broadcast because we're going to look at this topic, who is Jesus? Why Christmas is important to mankind. Stay with me for the next 30 minutes, uh, please, and and we're going to uh, look at this um, very important question. Many people are asking, where is God in my suffering? Christmas answers that. We're going to listen to a couple of clips from Dr. Billy Graham and, and Tim Keller and I'm I'm going to share a very important message on this on this topic. If you know Christ or if you don't know Christ, either way, I pray and hope that you will be enlightened through the scriptures I'm going to share and it's going to be an encouragement. I pray it's going to be an encouragement for you and for me. As we start, let's watch this 60 seconds clip from Dr. Billy Graham and what he says about Christmas. Christmas to have meaning cannot be separated from the cross. The angel said at the birth of Jesus, he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus himself said, speaking of his death, to this end was I born. The central message of Christmas to me is that Jesus Christ by his death and resurrection can transform both individuals and society. The cross and the resurrection stand as man's only hope. From these two momentous events, God is saying to sinful man, I love you. This is the good news of Christmas. Now, we're going to discuss who is Jesus? Why Christmas is so important to mankind? One of the most common question asked by people uh, in this world is if God is there, why there is so much suffering? If you talk to atheists or people who don't go to church uh, very often, uh, this is what they will ask. Why am I going through so much suffering? If God is there, why can't he come and just take my suffering uh, out, out, out of my life? And, and if you stay with me for the next 15, 20 minutes, I'll explain and unpack how Christmas answers that very important question. First, we need to understand God does not live in a time domain. We live in a time domain, but God is, uh, lives outside the time domain. That's why the Bible starts with the verse, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. God was there in the beginning. The time had a beginning, but God was there in the beginning. And, and Paul writes uh, to Timothy, this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. See, time had a beginning, but God didn't have any beginning. God was there before the time began. God is eternal. God lives outside the time domain. And, and secondly, we need to understand God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth, says John. God is, 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 is spirit. So if God wants to do something about the mess that we have created in this world, God cannot magically remove the suffering and create a new order. God cannot bypass the laws that he created and, and, and do magic to remove the suffering. God created this world in a certain order and, and put laws in place. He will not breach the, the own laws that he created. For example, if you look at Proverbs 8.29, it says, When he gave the sea its boundary, so the waters would not overstep his command. And when he marked out the foundations of the earth. And Psalms 104 says, he said the earth on its foundations never to be moved. See, God created and designed the world in certain order. He gave the dominion and authority to rule this earth to, to mankind. The Bible says, uh, uh, the, the highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind. The word mankind, the Hebrew word, uh, is used as Adam. See, we think Adam is the is the name given to the first man. No, uh, if you look at the Bible, many places where God refers to man or mankind, it refers to Adam. And another translation says, the earth he has given to children of man. And God has given this to, to physical human beings. 
to to rule and have dominion over the earth and spiritual beings like angels and other cre- spiritual uh, beings cannot invade the earth and and then have dominion and authority god will not allow that and that's how god designed this 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 world he created it's put it is put some certain orders and 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 laws so, so therefore if god wants to come to earth and solve our problems he will follow the the order and laws and the rules he created he wants to empathize with us he wants to be one of us and know what it is to be like a human being so he can solve our problems hebrew chapter 2 says since therefore the children share in flesh and blood he himself likewise partook of the same things that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death that is the devil and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery see he himself likewise partook of the same things what does it mean he he became flesh and blood he doesn't want to be there in heaven and and solve our problems he wants to be one of us and christmas is god entering the time domain from eternity and and living with you and me just like any other man so if he needs to come to the time domain he needs to 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 fix a time where, where at what point he's going to live in this earth the bible says in galatians um, but when the time had fully come god sent a son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those under the law that we might receive the full right of sons see the time here when the time had fully come the greek word uses chronos that means that that's where the chronology comes from god had set a time in a in a, in a calendar this is when um, he's going to enter the time domain and and god cannot come and live with all his glory just as he is because the bible says we will die it's not that god doesn't want to live with us but it's practically not possible it's like i eyes cannot exist before a blazing fire the eyes will melt when moses said to god i want to see your face show me your glory and god said you cannot see my face for no man may see me and live that's because we all have sinned the bible says we all have rebelled against god we all have a, a sin in a, a, in our body and and we blame adam and eve for for the sin they committed but even if god were to give you a clean slate today you will mess up things you will fail because sin is in you sin is in me and sin is deadly we are born corrupted by sin every single human being born in this earth who has ever lived is born with a death sentence we all have a death sentence we all have a, a limited span of time when we'll live in this earth so so what did god do to solve this problem god became man mary was conceived through the holy spirit The, 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 when mary was conceived the angels uh, men, gave uh, mention to joseph she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name jesus because he will save his people from their sins so jesus is the name given to god head in flesh and jesus um talking about Jesus Paul writes for in Christ all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form Jesus is God incarnate God in flesh and John writes in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the word became flesh and had his dwelling among us it's beautifully written He's, he he explains how God incarnate how became how he became man to live among us so jesus is god in flesh who chose the right time to enter the time domain to live with you and me 
And, and that's why Paul writes, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. God was manifested in flesh. God appeared in flesh. And that's the greatest miracle of Christmas. That's the greatest mystery that was unfolded and wrapped on that Christmas morning. The Bible says he was chosen before the creation of the world but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Christ was revealed at a specific time. God appeared in time domain just like you and me as a baby and that's Christmas. But one difference between the, that baby and, and every other human being was that Jesus was conceived through the work of the Holy Spirit, not through a, a, a man and a woman union. What does it mean? We are all from Adam's um, seed. When I was born, my son was inside me. When my father was born, I was inside my father. And we can trace it back all the way back to Adam. It's a seed we all carried from Adam. Just like a seed um, as a tree uh, inside it. And if you plant that seed, it will grow into a big tree. And the tree will have many more seeds. And then that seed will, will give birth, uh, birth to many trees. But all those trees were inside the, the first seed. And we are all from Adam's seed. The Bible says, um, uh, uh, God said to the serpent in, in the Garden of Eden, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Talking about, uh, th this is a prophecy about the coming of Jesus in the Garden of Eden. So there were only two seeds, Adam's seed and the seed of the woman that's talking about Jesus Christ who will be born by, uh, through Mary. That seed inside Adam was corrupted when Adam sinned. So that's the reason we are all born with a limited lifespan. A death, we are born with a death sentence. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. We don't have the eternal life. We lost that eternal life. And, and that is why Christ said to Nicodemus, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. We need to be born again. And Christ alone can give that eternal life. We need to receive that life that Christ gives so that we can live forever. And we cannot have that in, 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 this, in, in this corrupted body that we have because we are born with a corrupted seed. So when Mary was conceived, God placed an incorruptible seed in her. A new seed, a blameless seed, a spotless seed, an incorruptible seed. Peter says, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. Christ is, uh, is that incorruptible seed, is the life. Christ is life and is the source of eternal life for everyone. And that's why John said, the life appeared. We have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. Life appeared. The, the very source of eternal life appeared in, 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 in earth. And, and this is the miracle of Christmas, Christmas and this is a proof that God is with us because God alone can design us. God alone can orchest orchestrate these things. And remember, Christ came to die. He lived only 33 years and he suffered and died. The very reason he came to earth was to die. Many people think Christ had to die because he didn't have any other way. Uh, some bad people put him to death. He was helpless. No, that's not the case. If you read the scriptures, no one took his life. He gave himself to death. 
if if jesus had not done that if jesus had not voluntarily given himself to death he would have lived forever because he was spotless he was blameless there was no sin in him he could have lived forever he was the life and he is the life but he gave himself to death and he did that because he wanted to kill death he wanted to meet death and take the the keys from the from 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 sin and death and defeat death once and for all so he died a brutal death on the cross even though he didn't sin he took our punishments on that cross and he died the bible says he rose again on the third day because he cannot keep life down in the grave the reason why he was buried and uh, and and he rose back again because he he had to go down and and defeat death and take the keys from from sin and death and he rose again victoriously and he defeated death the bible says in bringing many sons and daughters to glory it was fitting that god for whom and through whom everything exists should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered we when we believe in christ when we put our faith in him we get transferred from that corrupted seed of adam into that incorruptible seed of christ we get transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and that's god's plan to give us eternal life we are born again and that's god's design to save you and me and that was revealed and wrapped during christmas that's how god designed that's a beautiful plan of god so christmas is more than presents and chocolates and singing holy jolly christmas Christmas is God unwrapping his beautiful plan for you and me. Christmas is God himself coming and dwelling with you and me. God in flesh. And he so he suffered and died so that we can have that eternal life and live with him forever. It's a it's God's way of saying I will give you a new opportunity to receive eternal life. So if you're asking where is God in my suffering God has done that and you and I need to respond to that call and believe in him and put our faith in him because he has defeated sin and death once for all John says but as many as received him he gave them the power to become the sons of God even to those who believe in his name will you believe Christ and receive him in your life and put your faith in him now let's watch this clip from dr tim keller to see what he's uh, telling about christmas christmas is about God's plan to do something not only about the most recent particular shape of the darkness Christmas is God's plan to do something about sin sin and evil and suffering and death and deal with it for good Christmas is about dealing with the darkness. Luke does not start this account saying this. He doesn't say once upon a time. Nor does he say long ago in a galaxy far far away. Which is a way to signal that this is a story. when when you when you you know you see the movie and you see long a long time ago in a galaxy far far away you know we're being told about it a wonderful story that's going to inspire us but it never really happened that's not what Luke is saying Luke starts his story 
You know the year that Caesar Augustus had the first great big census of the whole Roman world? That's the year that what I'm about to tell you happened. See, what he's actually doing here is he's telling us this really happened. In fact, if you go back just to the very beginning of Luke chapter 1, just, to, just you know, the very beginning of his book, he's writing to readers and he says, this is an eyewitness account. What I'm giving you is an eyewitness, eyewitness account. So in the beginning of chapter 1 of Luke and the beginning of chapter 2 of Luke, he's saying the most important thing for you to know is that the baby born in a manger, Jesus Christ, Son of God, becoming human being, and being born in a manger, that really happened. It really happened. Christmas really happened. Now let's listen to the song from, um, uh, from Integrity Music. Come thou long expected Jesus. That beautifully um, summarizes what we just heard about Christmas. for you. As, as we close, we're going to listen to a beautiful prayer from Dr. Billy Graham. Hey, if you haven't received Christ as your Savior, here's an opportunity for you to, to give your life to Christ and believe Him and accept Him as your Lord and Savior. This is the greatest gift anyone could have in life. And, and, and Christ said, my peace I leave unto you. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Cheer up. If, if, if you have already received Christ going through difficult times, Christ said, I, will, I, I, I am with you till the end of age. And God repeatedly said in the scripture, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And the, the very message of Christmas is, God is with us. You're never alone. God will never let you suffer on your own. And Christ will give you His peace that passes all understanding. And Christ will give you the wisdom and understanding that you will know Him better. And that's the prayer of Paul. Paul said, I pray that your hearts will be enlightened so that you may understand and you may see the hope to which He has called you. See, that's the greatest joy and they, that's the greatest gift of Christmas to know Christ to know him better I, I pray and hope you will receive this gift the greatest gift of Christ in your heart and you will know him better thanks for watching God bless let's finish by watching this clip from Dr. Billy Graham I'm asking you to put your trust in Christ I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer, sentence by sentence after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you've died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins. I repent of my sins. 
I invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>